Welcome to this free CCNA Packet Tracer Practice Lab. You can download the lab file from the link in the description. If you like these labs, please consider supporting me via my Patreon or the cryptocurrency options in the description. Also, please subscribe to the channel for more labs like this. In this lab, we will expand upon what we did in the previous lab. I have added an additional router, changed the IP addresses, and we will configure multi-area OSPF. The middle area is area zero, also known as the backbone. All other areas must be attached to the backbone area, and traffic from one area to another must pass through the backbone. Two of our routers are area border routers, or ABRs, because they have interfaces in multiple areas. R2 has interfaces in area zero and area one, and R3 has interfaces in area zero and area two. Let's get started. I'll configure these routers in order from 1 to 5. Make sure you configure the interfaces in the proper areas. Also, we should configure the loopback interfaces as passive interfaces and configure the reference bandwidth so that a 100 gigabit interface would have a cost of 1. Let's go on R1. Enable ConfT Router OSPF1. Remember, the OSPF process ID doesn't have to match between routers. In the last lab, I purposefully configured a different process ID on each router. In this lab, however, I'll do the typical thing and just use a process ID of 1 for each router. Okay, now R1's interfaces are all in a single area, so I'll use our shortcut from last time. Network 0.0.0.0 255.255.255.255, area 1. Now OSPF is activated on all interfaces with an IP address. Let's make the loopback passive. Passive interface, L0. Finally, the reference bandwidth. Auto cost, reference bandwidth. Now, what should the value be? We should configure it to be equivalent to 100 gigabits per second. That's 100,000 megabits per second, so configure the reference bandwidth as 100,000. Okay, that's all for R1. Now I'll go through the rest of these devices fairly quickly. Again, make sure to configure the correct interfaces in the correct areas. For routers 2 and 3, the loopbacks could be in either area, but the instructions say to put them in area 0. Let's go on R2. Enable conf t router OSPF1 network 10.12.0.0.0.0.255 area 1. I configure the same slash 24 mask as on the interface, but remember that a slash 16 would work as well. A slash 8 would not work, however, because 10.0.0.0 slash 8 includes F20 also which has to be in a different area. Okay, let's continue. Network 10.23.0.0.0.0.255, area 0. Network 2.2.2.2.0.0.0.0, area 0. Passive interface, L0. Auto cost, reference bandwidth, 100,000. Okay, next is R3. Enable conf t router OSPF1 network 10.23.0.0.0.0.255 area 0 network 10.35.0.0.0.0.255 area 2 network 3.3.3.3.0.0.0.0 area 0 passive interface L0 Auto cost, reference bandwidth, 100,000. Okay, next is R4. Enable, conf t, network 0.0.0.0, 255.255.255.255, area 1. Passive interface, L0. Auto cost, reference bandwidth, 100,000. Okay, last router, R5. Enable, conf t, router OSPF1. 
R5 is only part of area two, so let's use the shortcut again. Network 0.0.0.0, 255.255.255, area two. Passive interface L0, auto cost, reference bandwidth 100,000. That's all for step one. Now, step two is to configure route summarization on the AVRs. Here on R5, let me show you the route table. Do show IP route. We have all of these routes, 10.12.0.0, 10.14.0.0, 10.23.0.0, but R5 only has one path to them. So R3 could instead advertise a single 10.0.0.0 slash 8 route to R5, and it would help clean up R5's routing table. This isn't a very large network, but in very large networks, this is very beneficial. Let's configure that on R3. We want to summarize these routes R3 is receiving in area 0, so we begin the command with area 0, not with area 1, the area to which we will advertise the summary. Okay, next the keyword range, then the address, 10.0.0.0, followed by the mask, 255.0.0.0. Keep in mind that this is not a wildcard mask. That's easy to mix up since the network command uses a wildcard mask. So if we go and check on R5, instead of having learned routes to 10.23.0.0 slash 24, 10.12.0.0 slash 24, and 10.14.0.0 slash 24, it should have a single 10.0.0.0 slash 8 route learned via OSPF. However, the loopbacks don't fit in the summary, so they will be unchanged. Okay, let's go check R5's route table. Do show IP route. There we go. R5 has learned a single route to all of the routes that fit within the 10.0.0.0 slash 8 range. Of course, it still has its directly connected network of 10.35.0.0 slash 24 here. Now let's configure the same thing on R2. R1 and R4 don't need to learn about the 10.23.0.0 slash 24 and 10.35.0.0 slash 24 prefixes. They can just learn a summary. So we'll use the same configuration as on R3. Area 0, range 10.0.0.0, then remember it's not a wildcard mask, it's a regular mask, 255.0.0.0. Okay, so now if we check the routing tables of R1 and R4, we shouldn't see routes to 10.23.0.0 slash 24 and 10.35.0.0 slash 24 but rather a summary 10.0.0.0 slash 8 address. Keep in mind it can take a few seconds for the network to converge and this change to show in the routing table. But let's check on R4. Do show IP route. There we go. There's the 10.0.0.0 slash 8 summary. In this lab, we looked at multi-area OSPF. We could have more areas, area 3, area 4, area 5, etc. But remember that all areas must connect to the backbone area, area 0. We also used summarization to reduce the size of our routing table, which is highly recommended in large networks. That's all for this lab. Thank you for watching. I hope this lab and video have been helpful for you. Please subscribe for future labs like this, which will be released weekly. If you have requests for any specific labs, let me know in the comment section. If you want to support my channel, I accept Bitcoin and Ethereum donations via the addresses in the description. I am also a Brave verified publisher and accept BAT or basic attention token donations in the Brave browser.